Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the IMRRC for a unique gathering to look at the Purdy Deuce, one of the most iconic cars ever at the Oswego Speedway. And also, later on, we're going to go over to the elementary school. Eight wonderful drivers and people associated with Super Modifieds so will have a great panel discussion over there. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about the Purdy Deuce. The whole thing was triggered by a guy by the name of George Offenberg in Florida. On the 26th of November of 22, the car arrived at Doug Holmes' place in Auburn. On the 27th, they started the disassembly, and that was completed on the 30th of November. On the 2nd of December, the frame went to Lee Osborne and was returned on the 4th of January. The frame in the auto body then went to Steve Miller's shop in Mexico, New York, and Steve returned it on the 21st of March. The trailer arrived at Doug Holmes' place on July 4th and was ready to go on July 5th. Trailer to Lee Osborne on the 14th. Lee returned it on August 9th to Doug Holmes. On the 24th, the fuel filter arrived. That was the last part they were waiting on to complete the car. And on the 28th of August, 2023, the Deuce was fired up for the first time since 1974, and that was done at the Romulus Airport in Romulus, New York. So ladies and gentlemen, we've got Bentley Warren, Warren Conium, Doug Holmes, Lee Osborne, and Steve Miller, the guys who primarily were responsible for all of the restoration. I want to mention that the car, as soon as we are done here today, will be loaded up by Bentley Warren and taken up to Bentley Saloon in Arundel, Maine, where it will be on display for the rest of the year. Correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that happily, that, that's happy for me, too, and a lot of people that are going to see it. All right, we got, I want to start with you, Doug, because uh, you were the kind of the coordinator for all of this. Well, it took a little while before we received the car. Chris was going to uh, restore it with his son, David, and uh, they just decided it was more than they could handle in a reasonable amount of time. And uh, so um, Bob Hodgson had called me, Bentley called me, asked if we could get it done for Classic, and... Uh, I said, yeah, if we get the car here, we'll have it done. We, got to get, we didn't have the car at that point, but uh, when it showed up, it, was, uh, it showed up at my shop. And uh, like Bentley said, the, the half-inch shock stems were about five-eighths, you know, with rust. And uh, it was pretty rough. It was pretty rough looking. So I, I first, one of the first things I did was call Lee. And I said, Lee, you got to come over and look at this thing. Give me a plan of attack on this thing. And uh, so we soaked it with a uh, WD-40 and uh, had it apart in a couple days. Took the frame up to get Lee because there was a couple cracks. We needed some motor mounts made for it. And uh, uh, just some small, small things fixed on it, blasted and powder coated. Got that back, took it to uh, Steve's, got the fuel tank or the the tail section done hood nose replace the door, right side door panel uh, the, and uh and paint and lettering and uh after that it was just uh taking every single part of, uh, apart and either rebuilding it or hopefully rebuilding it but uh, a lot some stuff we had to replace the master cylinder was lost cause the fuel filter was also shot and that was a problem. It seemed to be aircraft stuff that uh, from back in the day. We just uh, I couldn't find a fuel filter, so we tried the best we could to duplicate it. And that's where Ted Johnson helped me on that. And we uh, the brakes went to Martin's machine, and uh, I think it's Oklahoma. The gauges went out, got new bezels put on them. Uh, just took the rack apart, the rear end apart. Uh, Polished up the axle, zinc flashed it. Uh, the wheels were all just done and seracoded. Um, I should have brought my thumb drive because there's pictures, or I don't know, maybe George did, but uh, I I had all the uh, 
every all the photos from everything right from start to finish uh, um, but yeah can do it without Lee and Steve Miller and a bunch of people name on that board there and uh, I'm glad it turned out as well as it did well, we want to mention that uh, Howard Purdy's wife is here, his son Chris are here. They were responsible for the car finally being turned over for restoration, and Bob and Nancy Hodgkins. Bob was a mechanic on the Deuce for a number of years, and they are here. We want to acknowledge them. They'll also be over at the event at the elementary school at 1 o'clock. Lee, let me get you in here next. What was your role in this? Uh, I did some frame repairs, made some bumpers, uh, motor plates, <clears throat> stuff that was just beat up too bad to fix and uh, we got a friend of mine uh, painted part of it and uh, then we sent it back to Doug and, and he sent it up to Steve now how did you get involved Doug contacted you about this it was my lucky day yeah he called me <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he called me up because I've, I've done other projects for him so you got so just one more on the list. That's right. Just more iron, you know. And Steve Miller. Steve, this is probably one of the fastest restorations that's been done. I know you've had a number that have been known all over the United States, uh, competed again, not competed, but showed again in Indianapolis and stuff like that. But this has had to be a, a very quick restoration. It didn't seem quick. <laughs> the uh, body looked like King Kong jumped up and down on it several times. <laughs> so... Uh, I had to, uh, well, the whole back end of it, I had to fabricate, and that was missing, because this had a tail section on it when it last ran, and uh, the hood was, oh, that was sad. Did you keep the original hood? The, the hood, the whole original holes have been filled and recut for a big black radiator yeah. opening. Well, they, they did a couple of things. They They moved the offset. Uh, I think in 68, was that it, Benton? When they changed the offset on it and put the uh, open tube axle in it and everything? I, I can't remember. I, I can't remember, but what it, it looked so much like original when I drove it in the 69, I think it was 68 and 69. It looked just like when you guys brought it. I'm like, wow, that's the same guy. I didn't think it was touched, except it looked cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, originally the engine was in the center. And the rear end is out of an Indy Roadster. And when they, they had an Indy Roadster that they were going to replace this car with, but it didn't work as well as this car. So they took all the running gear out of it, because originally this car had wide fives and housing rear end and stuff. So when they changed the offset, because it is an offset rear end, instead of making a new hood, they just riveted a patch over where the engine used to be. <laughs> so <clears throat> it was... And, and then, then they put a big block in it and then cut up more of it. And they cut into the nose section. And uh, so this, there was a lot of it that uh, had to be replaced. This is the original top, though, and the original nose piece. Now, Doug, uh, when you got the car, I've been hearing for years this car was put away right after it was raised. as was still in pristine condition. All you had to do was take it out and dust it off. That was obviously not the case. <laughs> I have witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> it was rough. It was rough. It didn't roll. It had four flat tires. He backed the trailer up to the garage, and we picked the back end up with a cherry picker, and then we kind of scraped it off the trailer, you know, got the, the rear end jack stands, and we picked the front up with a cherry picker and set it on the ground. But it, uh, it wasn't going anywhere on its own. Now, what made this car so competitive? It started in 64, uh, ran through 74, the Roadster era came into being, and yet this car was still a winner. Uh, Maybe just the drivers? Well, they, yeah, that's probably a lot of it, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, it's light. The car's very light. Uh, we, we scaled it with the, with the small block, and it was uh, f uh, 1,740 pounds. Uh, with the with the iron small block, um, Bentley said it would have run better if I didn't have fifty year old shocks on the back. <laughs> and uh, well, they were relatively new. <laughs> well, Bob found them for me. They were in the box bottom of one of the boxes there. They're Monroe uh, Monroe Max is what they are. They were yellow, but in all the photos they're they're black, so we painted them black. But. Uh, uh, 
couple, one of the front shocks we had terrible finding, that little one that's on the lower part of the axle. All I did was go in the book and measure lengths and compress and that, and a, that shock's off of a Peterbilt cab or tip flip over cab or something. I don't know, but that's the only thing we could find that would fit on there. And, uh, uh, yeah, as far as the chassis, I don't know enough about it. To what what made it fast? Bob Hodgson said it's basically a three-wheeled race car, and uh, I don't really know what makes it so fast, other than I know it's light. Yeah. Well, we'll talk to Bentley. He knows what made it fast, right? I, I think a lot of it was Howard Purdy. He was always wanting to. He he was a person that was driven to do everything perfect and make things right and fast. And I, I remember driving it. And we were out, we were running practice, and Fritz Klein was there. Fritz used to be a big guy that worked on the car, real nice guy. And uh, Howard's, well, why can't you go faster, Bentley? And I'm like, oh, I thought we were going pretty, no, pretty good isn't good enough. He said, why can't you, he said, what, what's wrong with the car? I said, I don't, I don't think anything. He said, well, why can't you get into the corner, you know, deeper? And uh, what, what happens? So then I tell him what, what happened. He said, well, what happens in the middle when you try to pick the throttle up? Does it push or is it, or is it assy? And uh, I said, well, it gets assy when you put the throttle down. He said, what about coming out of, uh, you know, that's the first two parts of the corner. What about coming out? He, I said, well, sometimes it's pushing, sometimes it's assy. And then he had Ray and Bob change tires, and he only had four wheels, so he had to take the wheels and tires off the car. He had a couple of spare tires, change the tires, and to go out would run the same speed, but it was... It was a little bit different. And Fritz says, Fritz told me, he said, you know, you're the fastest car on the track by two tenths. He said, but Howard always wants to go faster. And that was Howard's way. He always wanted to go faster. And I really believe he did that in his businesses and in life and everything. How did you get in the car in the first place? Now, Ronnie Lux, of course, had it in 64, won 12 features, was the track champion. It didn't do a lot after that. And then you got in the car and in 69 won the classic. How did you get the ride? Uh, Howard called me up and asked me, and I was like, oh, my God. And then I remember practicing in the car, and the car was so so good. And Ronnie Lux helped me get the ride. Ronnie Lux, I believe, told Howard that I would be the guy to put in the car. He and I raced a little bit together and talked a little and stuff like that, just on different things. And uh, he, he thought that I would be a good driver for the car, a good fit for the car. And uh, when I remember getting into it, in the first practice I was running, I was so darn nervous and I wasn't on the throttle wide open. I was just in practice till they threw the green. I thought I was going to break a drive shaft or a rear end. My foot was shaking so bad the car was going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, it's like, holy crap, I'm going to break something. So I just, when the, when the green flag came in, I practiced. The car was, it was unbelievable how good it went. All right, now after 69, you won the Classic, first Classic win. Then you got out of the car. Why? Well, I got a chance to go to the Indy 500 through. And you took that instead? <laughs> yeah, it was stupid, huh? <laughs> but this was this was like a, a ladder, and I, you know, I got this, this climbed me up the ladder to get some uh, recognition and and uh, the, the people involved with this car, and uh, just people that saw me and how it just made me look good, and uh, then I just got rides after that. All right, and then Warren, you got in the car. How did you get the ride? Well, Howard just called me and uh, asked me if I'd. Uh, had time to drive his car. And you said, sure. Yeah, you know, I mean, the car is so iconic. And, uh, you know, I said, great, that sounds like a good time. But like Bentley says, Howard, Howard always wants, wanted to go faster, and he was great at reading tires. He would just rub his hand across the tires and say, well, this one's working, that one's working, but this one's not. And uh, he would always say, well, the car is faster than that. And then uh, I know when I qualified, uh, I went to qualify for the Classic, I drove, it, I drove it the first week with a small block in it. And I said, uh, I don't know, this motor doesn't seem to have much. And he said, you're kidding. He says, it's a 4x4. Four four. And I said, well, I said, it doesn't pull as good as 4x4s four that I've run. So he said, okay. Well, that, that was a week before Classic. And uh, he said, okay, I'll see you next week. So he showed up at the, well, I showed up at the track on the Friday night to practice the car. And Gladdy, the girl at the uh, hotel, 
said Mr. Purdy called and said he's going to be a little bit late. He was making an adjustment on the car. So I said, oh, okay. Yeah, he probably won't get in until tomorrow. So, uh, okay, we missed some warm-ups. Uh, but the next day he showed up, and here it's got a big block in it. And so uh, I said, well, that's quite a tune-up. <laughs> he said, yeah, well, he said, you said it didn't have much power. So he said, but he says, after I put this motor in, he said, I did find that uh, the other the 4x4 had a broken valve spring. And he said, so it was probably down a little bit. But he says, uh, hopefully this will be okay. But it was a, a stock 427 big block off a GM shelf with a flat tappet cam in it. I said, I don't think that's going to go any better than a 4x4. Four four. <laughs> Anyways, he was great to work with, and uh, unfortunately, the rear torsion bar broke, or spr uh, the uh, adjuster broke just as we were starting the classic, and we were down 14 laps, and the last thing he said to me was, well, if you win it from here, you're doing something. <laughs> but we did pick up a, a lap on the field. The car was was phenomenal. Uh, and I know he changed all the bars after the fact. Like after Classic Weekend, he changed all the bars. He said, I should have done this before Classic. But anyways, I only ran the car, I would say, six or eight times. And one win? No, well, Oswego, yeah. And then we won uh, Fulton, and we won Flamborough, I think. So why did you get out of the car? I, somebody else called me for a full-time ride, and Howard wasn't going to run a full schedule. Well, Bentley, I think that's one of the interesting things about this car. He almost never ran a full schedule, only a couple of years. In the 10 years or 11 years that it ran, I believe it was 97, either 94 or 97 races total. And the average finish for the car with all the drivers, he had 10 different drivers in it, the average finish was 5.8. Well, most of that was Ronnie Lux. Ronnie Lux and Howard and Bob and Ray and uh, Fritz and all of them were just such a team. And Ronnie, Ronnie had a good foot to stand on the gas. I'd say something else to go along with the foot, but he, uh, he really got the job done well. And he was a phenomenal driver. And he won, I think, every feature but one the year, the, the last year he drove it before he went to Indy. And uh, he was just a phenomenal race car driver. And the car was phenomenal, too. And after that, the guy, the last guy in the car, and I believe it was the last time they ran a full season, last time they ran it all, was Jimmy Winks, who had a, quite a career in it. Yeah, now uh, Howard, Howard put that uh, Reynolds aluminum big block in it. And uh, I know Jimmy told me, he said, man, it sure doesn't run out of power now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Howard, Howard was, uh, he was before his time, really. He was a smart man. So, Doug, want to sum this up? What about this car? How competitive would it be today? What can you get it down to? We probably have to ask Bentley, but we would need more power. I'm sure he'd say that. <laughs> but but uh, I don't know with the weight and all. I don't know. Steve, these guys could probably answer it better than me. I mean, if you put a today's big block in there, I'm not even sure the frame would handle it, really. It's, you know, it's... Uh, it's pretty rusty, you know. It was all blasted and powder coated, but it's it would need to have some. It's bent too. Yeah. Lee told me this thing's bent. The front's pushed over a little bit, but uh, yeah, front, you, <laughs> you would you would probably have to pretty much take it all apart and just make a new frame, and I would think for it maybe put some better brakes on it too. I don't know. And get a younger driver. <laughs> wow, I don't know. He's still good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's still good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank Mrs. Purdy, our son Chris Purdy from the Howard Purdy family, uh, Bob and Nancy Hodgkins, and of course Lee Osborne, Steve Miller, Doug Holmes, Bentley Warren, and Warren Coney. We'll be at 1 o'clock this afternoon. We're going to be across the street in the elementary school. Uh, we will be joined by Otto Sitterly, Eddie Bellinger, Brandon Bellinger, Allison Sloat, and John Nicotra, along with Bentley Warren and Warren Coney. So hope to see you over there then. Thanks for being with us here now. <laughs>